Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on transcription and translation. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Protein synthesis is the process of making a protein using instructions from the DNA, or sections of those DNA, called uh, genes. So the central dogma to all of biology is this picture right here. DNA is transcribed into mRNA, or messenger RNA, which is then translated into proteins. And proteins control a number of the things that uh, we, we do in our bodies, including enzymes and hormones. So this is an extremely important concept here. So why are proteins important? Well, like I said, they catalyze biochemical reactions in the form of enzymes. They help fight disease in the form of antibodies and transmit messages in the form of hormones. They also help to build bone and muscle. So you should remember this back from your biomolecule lecture. So protein synthesis, there's two major processes that we're going to talk about. The first is transcription, and that's when you go from DNA to messenger RNA, and translation, which is when you go from messenger RNA to proteins. So first, let's look at some differences between DNA and RNA. So they're both uh, monomer nucleotides. The sugar is what is slightly different. So deoxyribonucleic acid versus ribonucleic acid. So you've got deoxyribose sugar in DNA and ribose sugar in RNA. Also, the bases are slightly different. So in DNA, we have A, T, C, and G. Well, in RNA, there is no thymine, there is no T. That's replaced with U, which is called uracil. DNA is a double helix, while RNA is a single helix. And DNA is located in the nucleus, while RNA is located in the nucleus and in the cytoplasm. So here is just another overview of what they look like. You can see the structures on the top portion there. And then the key difference is that thymine is replaced with uracil, in RNA. So the three different types of RNA that we're going to talk about are messenger RNA, which carries copies of the DNA, so it actually carries the message from the DNA. Transfer RNA, which is tRNA, that transfers amino acids when we're making proteins. And then you have ribosomal RNA, which is rRNA. And that is just an RNA that makes up the structural portion of the ribosome. So that one's not as important for us today. So there's pictures of them. The tRNA actually looks like a little T, if you want to think of it that way. There's the ribosomal RNA in the middle, and then the messenger RNA is just a single strand that we're going to get from the DNA. So first, let's talk about transcription. So transcription is when a section of the DNA, or the gene, uh, unwinds, and it's copied into messenger RNA. The enzyme used is RNA polymerase, not DNA polymerase, and where it happens is the nucleus. So let's look at the steps of transcription. So first, the DNA is unwound at a certain portion. So not the entire double helix is opened up like in DNA replication, but just a specific section around a certain gene that we are trying to make a protein from. RNA polymerase is going to come in and copy the DNA strand, creating a complementary messenger RNA strand. Now we'll look at how that works in just a little bit. So then the messenger RNA after that moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and binds with the ribosome to begin the process of translation. So let's see what that looks like in the form of a couple pictures here. So we have that large sphere looking object which is labeled RNA polymerase. That comes in after the DNA is kind of unwound at that specific spot in the double helix. And then RNA polymerase is adding those nucleotides to make that single strand of messenger RNA. So it's using the code that's in the DNA to make a copy that, they, that can then go out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. So another thing to be uh, aware of here is that A is going to pair with U now instead of T, and G is still pairing with C when we're talking about creating that messenger RNA. So what would pair with the following sequence here? So if you have the DNA is ATT, ACC, GAT, what will the messenger RNA look like? Well. A's are going to pair with U's, G's with C's, so this is what it looks like. Notice the messenger RNA has no T's in it whatsoever. There is no thymine in RNA. So let's move on to translation. So now that we've got our messenger RNA, we need to translate it into protein, so into something the body can understand. So we take that info from the messenger RNA, we're going to use it to make a protein, and this happens in the ribosome, which is in the cytoplasm. So let's look at the steps here. First, that messenger RNA is going to attach to the ribosome at the start codon. We'll talk about codons in just a second. So you see here, the codon is a, uh, a sequence, a triplet sequence of those nu uh, nucleotide bases. Uh, AUG is one codon. AAC is another codon. 
It's three base pairs per codon. So step two, transfer RNA is going to carry an amino acid specific to that codon on the messenger RNA. So if you look in that little picture down there, you can see each transfer RNA has a different sequence on the very bottom of it. Each sequence is specific to the complementary sequence on the messenger RNA, and that tRNA at the very top there is carrying a different amino acid based on whatever codon it has with it. The last step, amino acids are going to bind with each other, making a long polypeptide chain, which will eventually fold and become a protein. So, the process is going to continue until a stop codon has been reached, and no amino acid is going to be associated with that stop codon. That just tells everything to stop. Now, if you want to know what codons or which or which ones uh, code for certain amino acids, there is a chart that you can either look up online or there is one in your survival pack that will tell you what uh, codons go with which different amino acids, including the stop codons. So here's just a good overview of where we've been. So we started with a DNA molecule at the very top. We transcribed that into messenger RNA, which carried the message from the DNA and into the ribosome so that we can translate that message and create a protein, which is a string of amino acids all together.